and I'm going to read the uh, procedures for uh, online. At this meeting, the commission will hold hearings on notice of intent, request for determinations of applicability. The commission will be voting on decisions to take up other business. No hearing times have been assigned. Actually, they have. Hearing times have, have been assigned. Um, <clears throat> In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order, suspending the provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting online. The commission welcomes participation in the meeting by the applicants and general public. Attending the meeting are um, Margaret Wheeler, Ian Jeffries, Marilyn Frank, and Peter Mahler, and the conservation resource planner, Matt Salem. This meeting is being recorded by Westwood Cable Access TV. We respectfully ask that everyone mute their commuter microphones and phones when they are not in use to avoid unnecessary noise during the meeting. This is an open meeting, so for all panelists who have access to the chat panel, please only use chat for technical issues related to the video conference. The commission will proceed by opening the agenda items, having the applicant or representatives present the project, or if previously opened in a public meeting, they will be provide a brief summary of the project. The commission and staff will follow up questions and will open up the public for questions and comments. At this point, if you wish to participate, you will raise your hand and your microphone will be unmuted for you to participate. Due to the limitation of the platform, attendees that are accessing the meeting via the telephone number will only be able to listen to the proceedings and will, will not be able to contribute. Please access the video conference via the link on the agenda, even if you do not have a webcam to participate. Okay, so I'm gonna take a roll call, Margaret. Present. Uh, Marilyn. Here. Ian. Yes, here. And Peter, here. I think that's it. I don't see anybody else. Okay, that's it. Uh, so we have a quorum, there's four of us. Um, so uh, the first uh, agenda item is open forum. Um, any, any, any open forum questions from the commission? Okay, none, Matt, any open forum? Thanks. Oh, no, sir. Any open forum questions from the audience? Please uh, raise have, your hand. Uh, Emily Teller has raised her hand. Okay, so I'm mute her, Emily. Thank you. I just wondered, I can only see one person at a time speaking, and I can see the um, conservation agenda, but you went so quickly through stuff. I just, when you come to the agenda item, if I have questions, I'll just raise my hand, correct? Um, yep. The view, so Emily, just as a kind of point of procedure, in the upper right hand, uh, corner of the viewer, there should be a view button. And if you do side by side with the gallery, it'll show all of the um, panelists' uh, camera feeds. Yeah, well, I've done Zoom a lot before, and it just shows swap video and shared screen or full screen. And it doesn't show me gallery today, which is weird because I've done gallery a lot. Oh, yeah, that is. I mean, you're on Zoom, right? Yeah, we're all seeing it. So I can only see the person speaking. I don't know. As you were viewing, Sarah, anyway. I, I don't know. I have a gallery, Emily. I can see everybody. Yeah, yeah. Can we're I go all, out and log in again? You can try that. We're going to be doing the Boy Scout for us, Emily. So OK, I'll try there. that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to go, uh, take up the proposed Eagle Scout project for the Tom Paul Footbridge. And Nathan, are you there? Yes, I need to unmute him. So Nathan, go ahead and describe your project. Is he having trouble with his audio, Matt? Yeah, that seems to be. Um, uh, Peter, Lynn has put a question up also that she can't see the gallery, Lynn Cohen. So I don't know what that is. Well, that was Emily. No, Lynn oh. Cohen is also on from the league and I don't, she apparently couldn't get the gallery either. I don't know what that is though. Yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I have it without any trouble. There's Nathan. Nathan, can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you guys. Okay, 
why don't you go ahead and describe your project? Um, okay, so I also have a presentation, so. Okay, that's fine. Yep, put it up. Um, so someone, oh, there we go, yep. Come on. Yeah, so. Uh, okay, so uh, hi everyone, um, I'm Nathan Shu. Uh, I'm a Life Scout currently from uh, Westford's Troop 95. So that's like right here in town. And I'm currently working on my ego project. So my ego project, um, I'm planning on building um, a footbridge that will be on the Tom Paul Trail, which is like, for those of you that don't know, it's like around the center of town, uh, near like the town center. So um, that's just like an overall description of like who I am and like what I'm planning on doing. Um, so a description of the bridge and why I'm doing it. So obviously um, as a scout, I know the importance of giving back to the community. So um, I wanted to do something that would like benefit the town of Westford. So um, I've run, uh, I do cross country and track at Westford Academy. I'm a student there and uh, I've run on the trails a lot there, especially the Tom Paul trail. So um, I wanted to do one there because uh, I've had like a lot of friends um, that have run there and I always see a lot of people that are using that trail. Um, and that was one of the stream crossings that I thought was um, especially important to have a footbridge over. So that's why I chose to um, build a footbridge over there. And that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, so just like a general description, it will be built of treated wood beams, decking boards, um, and it should use some galvanized screws and nails, which um, I hope that all those materials um, will be, since it's going to be outdoors, um, it should resist resist rot and uh, rust like for the metal pieces a lot better than like regular like wood or like regular like ungalvanized um, screws or nails. Um, so then for um, the location, I'm not sure um, whoever's, yep, yeah, there you go. Um, so the location um, for, uh, it's kind of small. Yeah, but like the location is essentially um, it's on the trail, uh, it's like right in, it's right, um, the stream itself is not very big. Uh, I included a latitude and a longitude um, in case anyone like, wanted to um, like go there and look at the stream crossing right now. Um, but it's uh, just adjacent to Bixby Lane off of Graniteville Road. Um, there's like a small community there and it's just off the trail, uh, just on the trail, like right off the road. Um, I would say like no more than like 20 to 30 feet away from the road. And um, it's like right in between that and the church that's on Ledgewood Drive. So um, that's the approximate location. And of course I have latitude and longitude that I provided on the slide right there, um, just as like a reference point for if anyone wants to visit the current location. Um, then next, I also included um, some pictures. This was the pictures I took were in the beginning of summer uh, before we got like a ton of rain <laughs> and it rained almost every day. So um, right now the water is, level is like pretty high. Um, I would say like if like if, when I went and measured it last week, uh, I would say it's probably like around eight inches deep, um, six to eight inches deep, depending on like where I measure uh, in the water. But this is what it looks like when it's dry, like in the when it looked like in the beginning of the summer. Um, as you guys can see, like there is a, like a big rock there that someone put. Um, it's a, I guess, a good temporary solution. But um, obviously, like a, having a footbridge there would like uh, reduce the need for like stepping on rocks or anything, and like it'd be a lot more flat and a lot like more safe to cross the stream. Um, so that's what it looks like right now. Um, and then. For the last slide, I just have like a proposed design. Um, I also like created a 3D model and I'm not sure like how I can like share that with you guys, but like I did like 3D model it online as well. So like, this is like my proposed design, like currently I have like a front view, a side view and like a bottom view and like the 3D model like shows it a lot better, but um, it's like just essentially um, uh, perpendicular beams that are running both along the width of the uh, bridge and along the length and then decking boards that are gonna be used on top. Um, unfortunately, I can't add handrails because uh, the trail at that uh, part is pretty narrow. So uh, I don't wanna make it any narrower than it has to be. Okay, so you know you're gonna to have to run this by the building inspector, right? Yes, uh, I understand that. Yeah, I'm, 
planning on contacting him over the weekend. Okay. Any questions from the commission on this project? Mr. Chair, this was included because it's a part of one of the conservation commission's uh, conservation restrictions. Um, so that's why he's, uh, I know Nathan has spoken with the um, homeowner, the, the condo association mm -hmm. um, as the property owner, but I wanted to bring this before the commission um, as we are co as we are a holder of the conservation right. restriction. Okay, that's fine. Um, so this is this is a preliminary. Uh, he's looking for preliminary approval. He'll be coming back to us. He's going to have to file a uh, notice because he's crossing the brook. Um, if there's no questions from the commission, any questions from the audience on this project? I don't see any. So. Um, can I have a motion to approve this project and he'll be back before us at some point? Approved. Second. All in favor, Margaret? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, Nathan, you're good to go. Thank, Thank you, you all. Nathan. Thank you. We'll see you again. Thank you, Nathan. Yep. Okay, we're gonna move on to our Next agenda item, which is a, a public hearing for Charlestown Productions for 14 Greenwood Road. This is an RDA. This is a legal notice in the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, Wetlands Non-Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171. Westwood Conservation Committee will hold a public hearing on Friday, September 10th, 2021, at 2 p.m. via remote participation. Adaptability. Application of David Mead for Charlestown Productions for construction of a of temporary structures and associated site work for a movie set within 100 feet of a jurisdictional wetland and 200 feet of a perennial stream at 14 Greenwood Road, assesses map 13, parcel 36, lot one. Welcome. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, my name is Keith Adams and I am the location manager of the movie Salem's Lot and just want to thank you and the board for um, holding this uh, hearing for us and we're really excited to have the opportunity to speak to you today and to work in the beautiful town of, of Westford. Um, I'm actually living here temporarily in Westford. Um, I'm from New York and I really love it. It's been really nice to be here from the big city. And I'd like to introduce the other people from our team who are on the call today. Um, it's our producer, Michael Clear, um, Carla Sales, who is the Director of Government Affairs at Warner Brothers, and David Mead, our Assistant Location Manager, who's been um, handling the, the permitting of this location. So if it's okay, I'd like to, to have uh, Michael, our producer, say a couple of words. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, my name is Michael Clear. Uh, I've been producing feature films for almost 15 years uh, and going on seven years with Warner Brothers. Um, and I also happen to be, have been born and raised uh, right here in Westford. Um, I went to daycare at Rodenbush Community Center and went to Frost Elementary School. Um, and my family lived at uh, One Fairview Drive for 25 years, um, which happens to be just the stone's throw from the location we're talking about today. Uh, and just a, just a personal note on that, I can actually remember riding my bike around these specific neighborhoods, you know, dreaming of one day making movies. Um, and after college, I moved to Los Angeles to pursue the, that dream. And, you know, I've worked really hard to, to get to a place in, in my career where I can have the ability to, to really make choices. Um, and, and one of those choices was in, in choosing to produce this movie, Salem's Lot, based on Stephen King's second novel, uh, one of his most celebrated books and, and one of the few movies that early, early novels, which hasn't been made into a theatrical film yet. Um, although it, it spawned a, a miniseries in 1979, it hasn't really been given the proper movie treatment. Um, and, and in making these choices and how we kind of put together movies, um, you know, the, the next thing that we had to do was put together this creative team. And, you know, I'm really proud of the team that we assembled, you know, between us. 
Uh, we've been responsible for movies like The Conjuring, The Departed, you know, the Lego movie, you know, and it and it chapter two. Um, and as we got closer to, you know, making this dream a reality, um, we started to assemble our crew. This is one of the best crews I've ever worked with. Um, you know, top of the line talent up and down every department. Um, and I feel really confident that we can pull off making this movie, um, you know, delivering a great product and also uh, protecting the, the locations where we're shooting. But most importantly for me uh, in putting this movie together, um, the most important choice was, was where we shot the movie. Um, no feature film, you know, based on a Stephen King book has actually been shot in New England. So when the studio asked me where I'd like to shoot this movie, you know, I said, I know a place. Um, and we ended up here. Um, now, I, I want to pass it over to Carla, um, who can speak a little bit more about Warner Brothers Green Initiatives. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to note that, you know, our, our director, Gary Doberman, has a home in Maine. Our production designer, um, also lives in Maine in a national park. And as a group, many, many of us live in LA and with the intensity of the weather we've all been experiencing, we take environmental issues incredibly seriously. Uh, but most importantly, you know, being from Western myself, having grown up here, uh, I really value the natural beauty of Westford. Uh, it's why we're here. Um, I'll make it my personal responsibility to protect it. Um, and in closing, you know, growing, growing up riding my bike around, around the town and, and dreaming of moving to LA to make movies. Um, you know, ever since I've been in LA, I've dreamed about coming back here to make a movie. Um, and I'm finally here and I'd appreciate uh, your support. Thank you so much. Uh, Carla, are you, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Thank oh. you so much. Great. I'll make my remarks really brief. It's really nice to meet you all. Carla Sales, I'm with uh, Warner Media Studios and Networks Group war with Warner Brothers. Um, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, really our practices as a studio and why protecting the environment is really a critical piece of who we are. Um, as a company, we're, we're really committed to sustainable practices, not just because of the important efficiencies as Michael mentioned, you know, we're living in a world where climate change is impacting us all around the world in how we do things every day and having to adapt is important, not just for the health of our employees, but also the communities in which we work. Um, but we have a long history of really working um, on environmental issues and sustainability efforts and, and those efforts started in 1989. Um, really with an employee-led recycling program and a call for our employees who are raising their hands to say, this is important to us. This is a core value um, you know, of ours and it should be a value of our companies. And that's really when we started our efforts that have led to us becoming really a corporate leader and an innovator in our industry for many years around in the environment and sustainability. So for those who are familiar with buildings, we were the, the very first studio to build a LEED certified soundstage and are, are currently the, the only ones that have multiple LEED certified sound stages, again, because it is a core value of ours. Green building, energy management, waste reduction, these are core principles of how we run our studios. Um, but really one of the landmark pieces of our work comes around green production and the work that we do with our productions around the world to make sure that we continue to keep this core value as part of who we are and how we show up everywhere. So all of our productions go through a thorough onboarding process and we keep environmental accounting to make sure that we're measuring and managing our environmental impact and our footprint. We're looking at conservation with everything from set lighting to the sourcing of lumber to you know, reusable water bottles and compostable products. We're constantly looking at things like, you know, how can we reuse our sets? How can we distribute or you know, recycle um, in ways that reduce our overall impact? Um, we're looking at composting and a really big uh, program that I personally love is our donation of surplus materials. Whenever we're done with something, it's like, let's not throw it away. Let's see, how can we reuse this? How can we donate this to another group who might be able to give it a second life? So in the last year through this program that we have called 
Encore, we've donated more than 10,000 um, 10, meals, um, nearly 1,000 pieces of furniture, and 75,000 articles of clothing to 41 nonprofits in 2020, just to give you a sense from a, a scope of what our productions are able to um, continue to reuse. Um, and we're really proud that um, 78 of our productions last year were recognized with a, a green seal from the Environmental Media Association because they really went above and beyond beyond um, in environment and sustainability practices. So this is just to give you a little bit of background and framing on who we are as a company, um, because when it comes to shooting in your community, uh, in a, a very special community that has a lot of special features in the location that we're looking at, we want you to know that this isn't just something that we're pulling out and saying, Today, we've decided to become environmentalists. Like this is who we are as a company and this is part of how we operate all around the world. Um, so just wanted to give you that background should it um, be helpful in evaluating our proposal. Thank you so much for your time and it's lovely to meet you all. Thank you, Carla. Um, I, I would love to just um, go over for you broad strokes of, of our plan, uh, which has been submitted to you, um, so we want to turn the Greenfield, I'm sorry, the Greenwoods Hayfield uh, into a temporary drive-in theater set uh, circa 1975. It's for the big climax of the movie. We hope to begin work next week pending board approval. We'd wanna start the infrastructure part of the, of the work uh, next week, as early as Monday potentially. And filming would be uh, October 13th, which is a Wednesday. And we would be done filming by around October 21st, the following week. And we would hope to have restoration completed around the first week of November. Of course, this is all pending weather, um, uh, but that is our, our goal. So to achieve the, the, what we wanna do, we need to put some infrastructure in the field to be able to get our vehicles and equipment out there, which, which means we wanna put some gravel roads down, um, which you can see in our plans. So we would scrape off uh, the, the top layer of, of soil and create a pile. We would put down the gravel in the, <clears throat> the roadway. And um, when we were all finished, we would remove the gravel completely and spread the topsoil back out on the field so that Mr. Greenwood could uh, plant it and um, resume growing hay in uh, the next spring. Um, so once we have the, the roadways constructed there, we are going to build two temporary structures in the field, a concession slash projection booth and a ticket booth, which is where, where when you come onto the, onto the field. And um, if you would note, in the plans that we submitted, there was plans to build a large screen, which has since been um, changed. We are not doing that any longer. That is mostly going to be a visual effects element now. There will be some sort of structure there. Michael might be able to speak to this more clearly, but it's, it's not gonna be anything on the scale of what was submitted to you. So it's going to greatly mitigate the amount of construction work out on the field. Um, so in terms of the, of the wetlands buffer zone, uh, Matthew was kind enough to transpose the wetlands map onto our site plan, which I believe you can all see. So we're well aware of the, the areas that we need that we're, that we're encroaching into the buffer zone and where we need to use the most care and caution. Um, let's see. So once we have everything built, then we will be preparing for the shoot and for the shoot we will be bringing in the cars and um and some large equipment for lighting and for for blocking the sun um there's a couple of large cranes that we're going to bring in and various lifts um and we're, we're planning to power everything with uh diesel generators that we rent from companies like herc these are always nice new equipment um, that, that comes out and uh, we have a third party company that comes out and refuels them and we will not put the generators in the buffer zone. We will keep everything outside of the buffer zone. Um, in addition to, to uh, the power needs, of course, we're going to need to bring in some bathroom trailers 
Um, there'll be a bathroom shower brought in for the construction crew. And then when we're doing the preparation for the actual shoot, which will really be kind of the week before the shoot, so sort of the week of October 4th, we would bring in a tent company to put up a couple of larger tents and some more bathroom facilities, all of which will be on a different area of Greenwood Road, not in near the wetlands area. Um, the, we, let's see. Yeah, I, I think that that's sort of the general overview. And, and just to be clear about the process here is that when we first came to the Greenwood family and, and talked to them about working on their property, um, they expressed to me that this is hallowed ground for them. It's been in their family for 100 years. And they warned us right away that we were near a wetlands area. So we knew that we were going to need to come to the town of Westford. And, and we have been trying to be as diligent as possible. And as Carla explained, we will go above and beyond to do what is needed and be as transparent as possible and open our process to anyone who wants to come out and take a look as we're you know, getting things set up. Um, and we do also understand that pending this board's approval, the next thing that we need to do is, is get the buildings department uh, on board. And we're working with Mr. Fontaine on that front. He, we have plans already that we've submitted to him. So um, I also just wanna thank Matt Salem, who's just been extremely helpful in communicating with us this entire time and walking us through this process. And I'd love to open up the, the, the panel to any kind of questions uh, if I've not addressed any concerns that you might have. So um, can you just describe, I mean, are you graveling this whole site? Are you just graveling a, a specific no. pieces? We're graveling uh, a, if I'm going to pull up the, the plan here. So the, the, the roadway, there's a perimeter roadway. Um, there, the roadway into the site uh, is, mm -hmm. is going, going to be graveled. That we're actually, per, per Carl Greenwood, we're going to leave that um, because that is helpful to him to be able to access his field. So it's basically, it's a perimeter road. It's a couple of larger uh, 100 by 60 pads, we're calling them, gravel pads, and then some thinner rows of gravel in the middle so that the cars can get out and park in a kind of pattern that is consistent of what a drive-in theater looks like. So no, not the whole, not the whole field. Not the whole field. Okay. No. No. And, and this 100 by 60 foot screen is no longer going to be there. Correct. Yes. Um, actually, I forgot. I did. I forgot to mention one thing. Um, quite important. So the the uh, what we've already begun doing, and this is per uh, the the statute and the board. Uh, I, I believe the recommendation that was given to us is that we are going to install silt fencing around the borders of the wetlands area to ensure that none of the gravel will run off into the wetlands from the field. And every hundred feet there will be like a five foot gap for wildlife to pass through. And then we'll add wattles to the silt fencing, which would present, uh, prevent any soil from seeping into, into the wetlands if there's any kind of heavy rain. And we'll also put the same wattling around the dirt piles, the topsoil that we're going to displace um, so that uh, if there's heavy rains that, that, that the, the soil won't run off. I think that that um, is what the, we were advised would be necessary to protect the wetlands, and we're we're absolutely ready to do that. We've already begun to do that. And and we are crossing the brook. Yes, I mean, we saw. I saw pictures of that, and it looks awful muddy. Um, is there a possibility to put uh, erosion control along the edges of that crossing? Absolutely, yeah. In fact, we're gonna we were gonna um, we were gonna shore up that with a couple of uh, some metal plate plating, and we can do erosion control around the size of that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, one of the concerns we have is is you know that um, PVC pipe. We we don't want that crushed. Yeah. Understood. Right. Yeah. We had um we had our the 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 gentleman who is going to be bringing in the heaviest piece of equipment came and scouted the location and 
he advised what was needed to get his equipment out there. And part of that is putting metal plates along uh, that area you're referencing as well as uh, into the site. Okay. Which should displace some of the, the, the weight of, of the machine. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay, question, uh, questions from the commissioners? Any questions, Margaret? You're muted. Um, yes. So first of all, I would like to thank Keith, Michael, and Carla for, for coming forward and um, sharing a lot of information with us. It looks like you've, you've really done your homework. Um, one of the questions I had had is, while I love Westford, I was wondering, have you looked at repurposing um, an existing drive-in or former drive-in in the area as opposed to, you know, doing this in um, basically an agricultural area? I can speak to that, Keith. We, we've spent a, a, a really long time in the area looking at a variety of locations. We've looked at um, uh, drive-ins, active drive-ins, abandoned drive-ins. We've looked at uh, uh, parking lots um, and there's a very specific quality in addition to um, the, the aesthetics of, of this location. But more specifically, um, we, need, we need the sun uh, to be at a very specific angle um, in order for uh, sort of the climax to take place because the sun is an, is an element uh, in, in the action of the scene. And, and I can, uh, after, and Keith can speak to it because he was the one who was spending most, most of his time. Um, there, there are not many lots that have the particular characteristics of this one that would allow us to pull off what we're trying to pull off. Um, it's, it's one of the reasons why um, it's so important to us uh, is it, it, it really, the, where, the, where the sun is to the, the angle of the lot uh, and to the design of, of, of our set, um, we don't currently have another place that would work for this. Okay. Um, another question I'd had is, do you have a rough idea of, of how many people would be on site at any given time? Because one of the, one of my other questions was whether public safety would, would consider a single access sufficient should something, you know, untoward happen. Uh, yes, um, Ms. Wheeler, we, so, so it, it would, it would kind of fluctuate quite a bit based on what part of the process we're in. So during, during construction, I would say it would be about, you know, 15 to 20 people. And as we get closer to filming, it's going to increase beyond that. Um, once we are in the filming, uh, days, we're going to have quite a few people out there, I would say a couple of hundred. Um, but what we've done in the past and what I'm, I'm willing to do is I can speak with fire and rescue. We're happy to have a paramedic on site um, if it means to have a ambulance and paramedic on our side of the road, should there be any emergency where the road were to get blocked, we could, we could we could do something like that. Um, we are of course gonna be working with the Westford Police Department and whatever they think is necessary, whatever details they think are necessary to cover this shoot, we're happy to do that as well. So it's sort of an open conversation. I do understand what, why you're asking that question, um, but I, I think that with some careful planning, we can mitigate any risk and um, prepare for it. Okay, um, and my last question, in terms of restoration, you had talked about restoration for the hayfield, and I was wondering if you're planning it also looked at restoration for that path area, if you're, if you're laying down, you know, um, pieces of metal to provide support for the movement of heavy vehicles, if you, in effect, are doing, you know, disturbance beyond where the pathway is currently disturbed, would you be also restoring that part of the site? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, just to be clear, you're talking about the, the road into the field? Yes, the, the yeah. way you would access the site here. 
Yes, um, we, you know, as I as I mentioned, Carl Greenwood, he he's requesting that we leave the gravel road down because he brings machinery out to you know to the field, and so it, you know if that was okay with everybody, we would leave that because it, it would be advantageous to him and his business. Um, but any other restoration around that area, we'd be happy to do. Uh, it, whether it be, you know, removing what we're putting down in terms of the, the erosion control or leaving it, if that is what's better. I mean, whatever you guys think is, is however you want us to leave it, um, would be, we'd be happy to. So it's all been part of our plan and budget from the beginning is to do a full restoration of the property, whatever that means, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sure. Other questions from the commissioners? I had some of the same concerns that Margaret had, and one was a culvert and making, there's going to be heavy vehicles going back and forth, and then all the cars that you're going to bring in for the scenes and things. So it seems like that's an especially important part to protect and make sure that it is restored as well. Um, but I, I think that you pretty much addressed those. Okay. Marilyn, do you have any questions? No, I think pretty much everything has been answered that I need to know. I, I maybe the one thing that I would say, if I if I may, is just uh, communication with the neighborhood and uh, telling them, you know, filling them in as to what you're doing, why you're doing it, et cetera. Absolutely. What vehicle you would have used for that? What's the vehicle you would use for that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, so what we do in, is that we write a letter up um, and we hand deliver it to any neighbor that will be impacted or feel the shoot in any way, whether that be close enough to hear it, see it, uh, parking, if we're parking near anybody. What's kind of nice about this area is that all of the, the residents there are directly adjacent to the field. Uh, I believe our, our relatives of Mr. Greenwood and already are aware that we're gonna be there. I, I, I know that there might be some other neighbors as well. We have um, already written those certified letters as was part of the permit application process, um, which had David's number who works with me and no one has yet reached out to him, but we're um, pretty diligent about the community outreach part of what we do, especially for something of this scope. So we will definitely be knocking on doors and communicating with everybody um, as soon as we get final approval. And um, Ms. Frank, if there's other means of communication that would be appropriate, we're definitely open to, you know, whatever the township or the commission would recommend. So you could be asking that also of the police and fire, what would help make their job easier, you know, in either a phone number to call you or something from the public. Uh, way ahead of time, so it's not in a panic mode. Thanks. Yes, not a problem. So, I I still have some concerns about when when all this graveling is going to be taking place. Would you guys um, um, allow us to uh, have you hire a um, a uh, engineer that would oversee when all this graveling is taking place? We want to make sure that this is done correctly. Okay, and you guys obviously have fairly decent financial resources. So if you had to hire an engineer, an environmental engineer to oversee some of this gravel and operation for a couple of days, would you be willing to do that? Yeah, absolutely we would. Um, my only request would be if it could still adhere to the schedule we're trying to keep uh, that, that we just, we are on a, a little bit of a, of a, of a timeline here. So yeah. if that sounds perfectly reasonable to us and we're happy okay. to do it. Yeah. Do you yeah. I mean, that? you're yeah. at your own risk, you know, I mean, if we uh, would approve this today, I mean, you, there's really a 10 day waiting period. I mean, you can go ahead and do it at your own risk, but if for some reason, you know, um, the state came in and said, no, you can't do this. It's, you know, it's your risk. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, um, how does that, can you explain that? that so the, the process is, is what you, if you approve us now, mm -hmm. then it goes to the state and then they review yes. it. Yeah, it has to be filed. So, Got it. Yep. Okay. Sure. 
And um, usually, people usually people wait the ten days, so there's no financial risk for them if they start the project. Okay, okay. that's something I can discuss with Michael offline. But um, okay, that's I, fine. Yeah, we 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, Matt can probably give you uh, hopefully someone that could do this uh, oversight right sure. now. Yeah, we can find a licensed site professional or something of the sort to um, that would kind of be a good third party for just kind of overseeing that, those kind of the installation of the putting the gravel out and, you know, for the removal right. as well. Right. Yeah. And also to watch that, uh, to make sure when the trucks go over that culvert, it doesn't uh, crush it or anything. Okay. Yeah. That's our concerns. Uh, okay. Can I open this up? I want to open this up to the audience. Uh, does uh, the audience have questions? Uh, Ms. Teller. Hello, my name is Emily Teller, and I think Chris Barrett is also on this. And I'm sorry, my video isn't showing because I'd like to do that, but apparently it's not. Sorry. Um, so I do have some questions, please. Um, I assume that the company will be accessing the Greenwood field from Acton Road from Route 27 and not Old Old. Can you? Can, speak about that or confirm that and Peter do you want me to give these questions to you or just ask whoever's there no you can just ask them no just go ahead and ask them. okay thank you very much hi Ms. Teller um thank you for participating uh yes that is correct the Acton Road uh, uh to Greenwood Road is how we would be getting in and out of the site yeah okay I, I, I are you are you with the Greenwood well, I mean with the um, rail trail yes Understood. I, I think I know what you're probably going to ask. You, 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 you want to you want to make sure that we're going to safely cross the rail trail and um, not endanger any of the uh, users of the trail. Probably yes. Yeah, I'd love to have you speak to that and um, say what you would like, what you're intending. And I have some other questions about that too. Sure. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about that. I, I think that you know. For for the early parts of the prep period, it's gonna it's not gonna be a lot of traffic in and out. Um, it'll be regular vehicles and some some trucks, but nothing more than you know. It is a it's a pretty active trucking area any already because Mr. Greenwood has a, you know an a, a business that involves large trucking, and um, you know there's an active farm there. There's so so I do see quite a few trucks go in and out of there. So Point being, the initial part of the project will not be a lot more than what's already kind of occurring there. Once we get into the really heavy part of the prep right before we shoot, I think what I would do is I would work with the police and ask if they wanted to put an officer there um, to just for safety, um, or if they didn't, if, if it wasn't going to be an officer, we might be able to just post somebody there like a safety person with a vest who can make sure to hold people using the trail as we're crossing it. I think that I agree with you. It's something that needs to be managed um, and I can come up with a plan for it. Okay. Um, so you won't need to block it off, you don't think, the rail trail? No. No, we'll need to cross it quite, quite often. We won't need to block it off, no. Okay. I think having somebody there would be a helpful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, um, it's very busy. You know, I think as it gets cooler, it'll be less busy. But until it snows, it's used a lot. Yeah, I've seen quite a few people using it. So I, it's something I've been, it's on my radar already. And um, we will follow up with you about what is best. Let me speak with the police and what they think and we can kind of take it from there. It also is gonna be pending our schedule and figuring out the heaviest times of traffic and what we're bringing in. But I would say basically the week of the 4th of October is probably when we would really wanna to, to do something like that through through the, the 20, 20th, 21st. Right, okay. Yeah. And also that side of the rail trail, um, has been paved, there is a drainage issue there. And um, I don't know what heavy trucks <clears throat> will do to um, exacerbate that drainage issue. So 
I, there's a town engineer who's been working on a project there to fix the drainage. And I don't know what heavy trucks might do to make that more difficult. We can, we can follow up with that engineer and talk to him. Also, if the engineer we're going to be bringing on, maybe he can take a look at that as well. Okay, his name's Paul Starrett. Paul, sorry? S-T-A-R-R-A-T-T. -T, and his email would be pstarrett at westfordma.gov. Okay. That would be great. I'd just like you to check in with him about that. Sure, you okay. got it. And, um, I guess the CONSCOM is fine with you removing all the gravel once you've put it down. I have a little bit of concern with that, but I think that's up to them to negotiate with you. And um, let's see, no trees will be removed, right? We're not planning on removing any trees. We're planning on trimming a couple of trees. Okay, and where will all the parking happen with the one to 200 people who are coming for the shooting time? Great question. Um, we're, we're looking at the 4-H club parking lot as one option. We're looking at um, Bonnie Greenwood's property, which is nearby. Um, that's Carl's sister, the stable. Um, we might have to find some blacktop in other parts of Westford uh, to park some of the larger things and shuttle in. That's a uh, kind of phase two of the planning that we do, but um, it's a, kind of a large part of my work ahead, but um, you know, we always find a way. Okay, because you know 27 is pretty narrow. Yeah, I do. With, okay. We won't be parking uh, along there. It'll, it'll be further afield for sure. Yeah. Um, and what about the 79 cars that you've lined up? Um, as Carla said, will you be recycling those or? How will you work with that? Are they drivable or you'll be? Oh yeah, it's a great question as well. They're, they're, they're rented by collectors. Um, our picture car uh, coordinator, basically his entire job is to find these cars in the area. He contracts them. They'll be coming in on car carriers. Some of them will be driven in by their owners and left there for a couple of weeks. Um, they are all you know, drivable cars, they will be returned to their owners when we're done. He owns some of them. Um, some of them are purchased for the show, but the bulk of them are owned by, uh, by collectors and, and just regular people. So if you know anyone who has any, please let us know because we're looking. Um, and, you know, I've already spoken to him about identifying if there's any vehicles that have any sort of issues, we'll put something underneath them and make sure nothing leaks onto the field and um, we're, we're working on that as well. And no security issues there, right? Security. I don't know for the cars for a couple of weeks. We're going to have to have a security person out there at night at a certain point rather early. I haven't determined when exactly, but we're going to have to protect that, that, uh, field for sure. Yeah. There's going to be an overnight security person there. I don't know when, but soon once we start really bringing tools out there and doing construction. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And sure. will, Peter, will the CONSCOM be issuing orders of condition? This is what we call a negative determination with conditions. So it, it instructs them that they don't have to follow full NOI, but they do have to uh, uh, follow the um, conditions that we put on the permit. And everything we've talked about will be in that permit. Okay. Okay. Um, one more question, Mr. Mr. Mahler, is yep. that how you pronounce your name? So yep. um, I just am curious. So you're then this goes to the state and they have 10 days to um, do they actually end up approving it or do they just have 10 days to deny it? I mean, is there a formal approval that comes from the state? No, they just they just let it go through. So. Okay. It's like a receive and file. Is that what from it? From a, yeah. yeah. Administerial. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, if we approve this today, uh, Matt can get it to you by Monday, Matt? Yeah, I mean, if, if the commission is still able to come up and sign uh, yeah. this afternoon, um, it's going in the mail to DEP and, you know, today starts the 10 day appeal period. So can you, can you uh, the rest of you go up and sign it today? I can stop by. 
Okay, you got to get all these conditions in the pack. Yeah, I know. Yes. Okay. We'll write them up. I'll we'll write them up. <laughs> so, is. so we have to be up there before four o'clock. Yeah, if you guys come up at three four at three thirty, three thirty, I'll have it ready for you guys. Okay. Outside or upstairs? Um, upstairs. Outside. If everybody's able to come at three thirty, I can meet outside. But if it's going to be kind of uh, piecemeal, um, I prefer to come upstairs. Just bring a mask. We can come up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the audience on this project? Um, there's a David Karpinski. Um, there's his hand raised. Okay. David. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, this is Dave Karpinski. I'm a butter of the parcel. Um, yeah. I did have a question as to uh, that land possibly being classified as Chapter 61, mm -hmm. um, and if there's been any consideration to that effect. Well, I mean, it, it, just because it's classified, I mean, you know, we're not the enforcement agents for 61A and what goes on the property. Um, you know, he, he you know, it, it's classified as agriculture. So, I mean, he's exempt from a lot of things. This isn't exempt. Okay. So he, that's why they're here before us because normally any agricultural use, he, they can do basically what they want, even within the buffer zones. But uh, because this isn't, he's got to, they have to, they have to come to us for approval. But this, the 61, 61A is just really a, a tax classification. So, that's correct. So I was curious as to would this je possibly jeopardize that tax designation with this not being permitted as uh, yeah, recreational That would be up to the town issue. assessor's office. Okay. Okay. I, I, um, I, I do doubt also have it some, some concerns. A temporary use. Huh? I do also have con some concerns. Um, you know, with the number of vehicles that'll be on site, uh, with the potential pollution that that, that may provide. Um, there is a, a history with the owner of these properties with some DEP violations in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that proper oversight of, you know, the vehicles coming on going, as, as they mentioned, diesel generators and things like that coming on site, um, yeah. you know, some oversight I think is needed based on some history there as well. It could be yeah, we're we're going to have an environmental engineer there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and the town engineer, I'm sure is going to be in on this stuff. Great, thank you for your time. Okay, yep, you're welcome. Okay, any other questions from the audience? Okay, seeing none, uh, can I have a motion to uh, uh, approve this as a conditional negative with conditions? So moved. Second. All in favor, Margaret? Yes. Anne? Yes. Uh, Marilyn? Yes. And Peter, yes. Motion to close the public hearing. Moved. Second. Second. All in favor, Margaret? Yes. Ann? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. And Peter, yes. Okay, you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. It's nice yes. to see you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be okay. in touch. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. See you at 3.30. Yep. Um, did... I think we lost Peter. Oh, we don't have it. We need to adjourn. Yeah. So I just, uh, I think we lost Peter. Uh, uh, Margaret, you're uh, as, okay, the, so, as um, the one on top. <laughs> can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Um, okay. So all those in favor? Marilyn? Yes. And? Yeah. And Margaret? Yes. Okay. Thanks for that save. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> In about half an hour. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Matt.